1997, Gary Kasparov lost a decisive game against IBM's Deep Blue chess playing supercomputer with a score of 3.5 for Deep Blue and 2.5 for Kasparov. It is possibly the most famous chess game of all time, and the story behind it is actually quite fascinating as well. And in an attempt to bring some life back into this channel, I'm going to attempt to explain the entire history of Deep Blue in under 10 minutes, so here we go. In 1985, graduate student Feng Swing Su more or less discovered that it was possible for a chess move generator to be constructed on a very large scale integration chip. Initial testing proved to be successful and in fact better than another chess engine known as Hitech, which at the time was rated around 2400 and in fact played better than most USCF rated chess players. It was also during this year where Gary Kasparov faced off against Anatoly Karpov to determine who would be the world chess champion. Kasparov won with a score of 13 to Karpov's 11. In 1986, another graduate student named Thomas Amman Tharaman joined Sue after writing his own chess program and was able to get Sue's chess playing chip, which is called it, to move a lot quicker, making it competitive enough to be on par with other chess engines at the time. After getting the assistance from two more students, Mari Campbell and Andres Nowatsik, to improve this chess playing chip's evaluation functionality, they all decided to enter into the 1986 North American Computer Chess Championship under the name Chip Test. However, due to time constraints, they had to make some compromises, meaning that Chip Test wouldn't be as strong as it could have been. It ignored castling, for example, and instead relied on a host computer to help search out some of its moves. When the tournament rolled around, Chip Test performed poorly at first, but was able to finish with a score of 2.5, putting itself in 11th place. The team then made adjustments to Chip Test and entered it in the same championship the following year, where it won with a score of 4. Due to the success of chip test, the team wanted to try and build an entirely new chess computer but with the same idea in mind, only it would perform a lot better. So in 1988, the they created the computer known as Deep Thought. Deep Thought was built in a very similar way to chip test, only this time there was two custom built processors, with a VLSI chip in each to generate the chess moves. Combined together, Deep Thought could evaluate around 700 to 800,000 positions per second, as well as weighing factors of things like pawn structure, king safety, and control of open files. During this time, the Fredkin Foundation was trying to promote machine chess and ran a chess tournament known as the Fredkin Masters Open that was offering a $10,000 prize to the first machine that was able to reach Grandmaster level, as well as a further $100,000 to whoever won the event. This is where the team decided to debut Deep Thought in a tournament. However, they were low on time and were in fact still wire wrapping the circuit board the day before the tournament even started, and it was due to this lack of time that Deep Thought was only running at half speed, and even during the tournament suffered from hardware failures. In spite of this though, Deep Thought was able to tie for second place with Mark Eidemiller and Klaus Pohl, with four points losing to only Alexander Ivanov. Other tournaments that Deep Thought entered into included the 1988 North American Chess Computer Championship where it won with a score of 3.5, and, and the World Chess Computer Championship the following year which also won with a score of 5. After the Deep Thought team graduated, they were all hired to work at IBM to build a chess computer that could beat the world champion at the time, which as I mentioned earlier was Gary Kasparov. It should be noted that Deep Thought did play a two game match against Kasparov in October of 1989, but it lost both games. After being hired to work at IBM and renaming the new computer to Deep Blue, work began to build a new chess computer that could beat a world champion in a chess match. After some time, the team had a chess grandmaster Joel Benjamin play against a scaled down version of Deep Blue, simply known as Deep Blue Jr. And after the match, the team hired Joel to develop Deep Blue's opening book. In 1995, the Deep Blue prototype played in the World Computer Chess Championship for that year and ended up in third place with a score of 3.5. The following year, in 1996, the team was ready to challenge Gary Kasparov for the long-awaited chess match. Kasparov accepted, and the match was played out in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The first game of the match was won by Deep Blue, marking the first win for a computer program against a world champion. In spite of this, though, Kasparov was able to score a win of his own and was able to draw two more rounds. In Game 5, Kasparov offered a draw, but the Deep Blue team refused. The game was then played out for another 24 moves, and Kasparov was able to win. In the final game, Kasparov played the position out quite slowly, whilst continuously playing anti-computer tactical moves, forcing Deep Blue into a corner where he could only make non-committal time-wasting moves. Eventually, Kasparov was able to win with a final score of 4 to Deep Blue's 2. The Deep Blue team offered a rematch to Kasparov the following year, which was accepted, and during that year improved Deep Blue, making it possible to search up to 200 million positions a second. The following year in New York on May 3rd, the rematch begun. Despite its improvements from the following year, Deep Blue lost the first game. In this position, Deep Blue made a mistake of moving his rook to the D1 square. Kasparov was at first confused by this move and attributed it to superior intelligence. However, also said in an interview that the first game was an easy win. Game 2 was arguably the most controversial game for the match. In this position, Deep Blue captures on B5, Kasparov captures back, and then Deep Blue paid Bishop to E4. The line that Kasparov thought Deep Blue would have taken would be something like Queen to B6, Rook to D8, and A captures B5, Rook A to B8, and Queen captures A6. After this, Black can play E4 and, and start counterattacking. But with the bishop moves, white's best move is something like queen to d8. It should also be noted that a further analysis of this game showed that Kasparov could have drawn the game out by a perpetual check. Better than that, modern chess engines such as Komodo and Stockfish see the positions only slightly better for white, and black can still turn the game around. However, due to the bishop move, Kasparov lost and in fact accused IBM of cheating by having another grandmaster feed deep loose moves. No proof of this ever came out, and the terribly made 2003 documentary Game Over Kasparov on the Machine also showed that Kasparov wanted to see Deep Blue's log files after the second game. 
IBM reviews this as well, but after the match posted them all on the internet. So if any of you viewers can understand what this stuff means, go ahead and read through it. Games 3 to 5 were all drawn with Kasparov showing signs of growing mental fatigue at the further he played. In the all opponent game 6, Kasparov made a mistake in the opening, playing the move h6, hoping that Deep Blue would force itself backwards. This position is threatening the knight, but Deep Blue sacrificed it rather than going backwards like Kasparov thought it would have done. In short, the final game didn't last very long after this, and Kasparov resigned after just 19 moves, meaning that Deep Blue had won with a score of 3.5 to Kasparov's 2.5. After the match, Kasparov requested another rematch, but IBM declined and in fact it retired Deep Blue. It now sits at the Computer History Museum in California. Nowadays you could purchase a chess engine for your laptop or even download a chess app on your phone that performed better than Deep Blue did. However, this machine with 12 years of work behind it marked a historical achievement for computing, beating the world chess champion for the first time. The big question now is, is it fair to say that Deep Blue truly won against Kasparov? who kept showing signs of getting weaker throughout the match. Was it Kasparov's fear that held him back in this match? Personally, what Kasparov was going through could be applied to every match he played in, and although it appears to be a factor, it is not fair to say that IBM took advantage of this unless real solid evidence comes out that they cheated. And so far, in over 20 years, no proof has been shown. Thanks for watching.